Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers Plus Me, episode 94. I'm an Ignis, and today we're looking at our gobblecopter. It's supposed to be our large-scale mining rig. Uh, this is episode 3 of the experiment and trying to make it work. You can see it, it's, you know, stuff spinning. It's, it was doing this last episode. Things were spinning in the last episode, but it's, I just decided that for this episode it might be fun if we did a little time lapse of it spinning uh, just as a lead up to the diagnostics that would follow. Uh, you can see we've been adding to the structure. We've got a large section above the beam now that's holding everything uh, and that's holding a bunch of thrusters. There were enough atmospheric thrusters in that section to hold uh, four full large cargo containers and then enough on top of that to hold 14 million kilograms worth of ship weight with a little bit of room, a little bit of breathing room on top of that. So uh, lots of thruster capacity for these things and all atmospheric thrusters because this is ultimately uh, ideally suited to working in atmosphere. So I thought, so we got that done and we were kind of building the structure as we go. It was kind of starting to look like it was gonna end up looking like a, a jellyfish in some respects, uh, but I, it, I'll cut to the chase. It's not going to get that far. It's, it's, it's just not going to get that far. One of the things that I had done, and a viewer pointed this out, and it was a very good point, is I had put gyros on the bore heads and the other rotating beams that are supporting them with the purpose of stabilizing them to try and reduce the vibration issue that we were having. So we had gyros that served the purpose of making them move and then gyros that would serve the purpose of making them stop moving. But I had neglected to put any thrusters on those things so that the gyros would actually be able to do their job and make the thing stop moving. That was the plan. So that's what we did. We put thrusters onto everything that we wanted to stop gracefully and we pretty much left everything else the same. We have a pair of timer blocks, one that starts everything moving and then the other that turns off the movement gyros, uh, turns off the rotors so, so that the brakes engage. And then we just simply add it into that, um, turns on the gyros that are responsible for stabilizing it and turns on the thrusters. And then we add it to the one that starts everything to make sure that the thrusters are turned off and the gyros for stabilization are turned off. So really simple, straightforward, uh, one button operation up to this point, but the issue has never been how easy or not easy it is to start everything working. The issue is that whenever we decide to try and stop it from moving, all the vibrations show up and they show up and they potentially last for a very long time. Uh, they like to linger, they like to appear out of nowhere. Um, they, as we found out uh, hilariously in the last episode, everything can appear to be stopped and in perfect working order and then all of a sudden you look literally sideways a few feet and the whole thing explodes. <laughs> this is kind of the stuff that urban legends are made out of, uh, the rotors that explode for no reason. We, we know it's not no reason now, we know it's the vibrations that are doing it but we can't predict or control the vibrations. And that's, that's to me, what kind of defeats the, the object in the game. We've, we've got this device that we can attach to our ships. You can see now we're converting it to a ship. We've, we've got this thing called the rotor that we can attach to our ships that's supposed to turn things, but we can't really use it because it likes to uh, cause vibrations that ruin everything. So the other thing that came up was the idea that maybe it would behave a little bit better if it was a ship instead of a station. And that's why I was a little bit gung-ho to get all those thrusters in place. We added a few temporary ones on top just so that the gyros that we added to the upper section would be able to keep it from drifting and doing all the crazy things it likes to do when you've only got upward thrusters on a ship like this. And one of the, the things that I noticed immediately is that it likes to sink. <laughs> Whenever the rotors are turned off, the weight of the different pieces that we have attached to those rotors pulls the ship down and it doesn't matter how many thrusters that I have or how many millions, tens of millions of kilograms worth of thrust that I have at my disposal to, to offset that, I still end up getting pulled down. And it, it, again, it's one of those things that the, the mechanic is there, we can observe it, we can work around it once we know it's there, but it doesn't make any sense. The thing that I decided to do was convert it to a ship and then we would come along with the grinder 
and grind off the support beams that were previously anchored into the ground and just let them fall. I, I, I thought that might be a fun thing to do in light of everything else that had gone wrong is just drop them. And then, of course, we have to hop back into the ship and see what's going on. And we can see things are falling. That one just about to clobber the hummingbird. I thought we may have missed it, but we didn't. Uh, we, we did kind of wing it, and it's about to crash. I didn't personally see it happen as I was watching the, the ship itself on a larger scale. But the hummingbird will eventually find its way back to the ground as a result of that little collision with the beam that we ground off the ship. So now... We've got things rotating, which means the rotors are on. The ship no longer sinks. It's no longer, be, no longer being pulled down. So we can at least count on the ship remaining stable to some extent. I mean, <laughs> this, this is rotors and such that we're talking about. Now, the goal here isn't really so much to see if we can get the ship to sit stable in atmosphere. That's at beyond a point that's kind of a no-brainer that we'll be able to make it happen one way or the other. The goal is to determine what happens if we start spinning up all the goodies and then stop them now that it's a ship instead of a station. And there we go with the hummingbird crashed right in behind the Spectre Omni. So I wanted to make sure that everything was sort of spun up to what looked like a reasonable speed and you can see we are also thrusting over a little bit because I didn't necessarily want to crash on top of the Spectre Omni. And then once we seem to be stopped and stabilized, then it becomes time to test and see what's, how's this going to end up? How's it going to work out? Everything is moving. It's moving at about the right speed based on the settings that we've given it. And now if we stop it from moving, are we going to get the vibrations? Is everything going to behave the way that we were hoping that it would? Or is it basically doomed to failure? Will it behave? Yes, no. No. No, it will not behave. There goes one of the boreheads. Now, someone could argue that I hit the, the um, ascent thrusters, the lift thrusters, uh, around the time that it was coming to a stop, and maybe that was part of it. It could be. I don't think it should matter at this stage. I think we're, we're looking at understanding the mechanics and how they work versus whether we would want to work with them under any circumstances. And my point of view is that no. I, I'm, I'm not really interested in fighting with such an inconsistent system, but watch this boarhead down on the ground. Because it's going to sit there until we try to turn on the rest of the boarheads. It's completely detached. There's nothing left that is structurally... There we go. And it just takes off and takes out that whole side of the ship. that's a bit of an inconsistency. <laughs> I mean, how, can, how can you justify that? First of all, it was still powered, completely detached from anything providing power. We've seen that before. It's a bit of an issue. Not usually the kind of thing that we're going to complain about. You can actually see the boarhead that's still on the screen there that's on the ground upside down. The spotlight is still shining on it, even though there's nothing providing it with any power. You could say maybe all of the blocks each have their own innate charge, and it takes a little while. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It really doesn't matter. We had one boarhead fall off, and then it turned against us, and without any power from us, any instructions from us, it flung itself like a throwing star and took out two other boarheads, and now the whole ship is coming down, because why the hell not? So that'll be it for the Gobblecopter, Mark 1. I'm kind of on the fence right now. Do I want to try and make another miner? Or do I want to um, pay myself in uh, back taxes for the ore credits, the things that I wasn't able to extract because I was spending so much time trying to make broken systems work and just go on ahead and finish the station? Maybe a bit of both. Who knows? We'll know by the next episode. <laughs> next episode. Uh, you can be notified when I add it by subscribing to my channel or follow me on, following me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information section below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.